Hi, in this video I want to talk about a technique that geologists use to graphically represent a sequence of sedimentary rocks. We call this technique a graphic log. And I want to, in this video, give you an opportunity to see how these things are put together, to have a go at plotting one yourself, and also to have a try at interpreting uh, a sequence of sediments from a graphic log. Now graphic logs will be drawn to scale, typically somewhere where something between 1 to 10 or 1 to 100. It will also show us grain size using the Wentworth scale that we've been learning about. And then a variety of symbols and ways of representing this data that shows us a great deal more about the nature of the sedimentary rocks being represented. Now for graphic logs we use a key. We've got a key, um, an example is shown here, which will show lithologies, so the different rock types, and also some of the uh, contents, the structures, the um, fossils, um, and the relationship between beds that we might find within a sequence of sediments. Let's have a look at how this is actually shown, because I think that's the best way of really understanding this technique. This is an example of a graphic log. There are several bits to this, because it's actually a very, very efficient way of giving a, a lot of information about a sequence of sediments. Let's break it down bit by bit. The first part of the graphic log, highlighted here, shows us the scale. Now the scale um, is important, as we'll see uh, it gives us information about the individual beds. It also shows us the sequence. Notice how the scale starts from the base of the graph and increases going up. Remember as geologists we start from the bottom of a sequence. So the oldest bed will be at the bottom, the youngest one will be at the top. The next part of the data is the lithology. You can see individual beds are shown here by the horizontal lines. Different lines represent different types of boundary. So a solid line would be a sharp boundary between beds. A dashed line would be a, a gradational boundary, one that changes gradually from one to another. The wavy line, you can see near the bottom, represents an erosional surface. So we're getting lots of information about the beds already. We can also see the thickness of each bed because they're plotted onto the scale, as well as their relative age. The symbols on the lithology column tell us what rock type each bed is actually made of. To see the grain size of these rocks, we then look at the third part of our graphic log. Here you can see the grain size on the Wentworth scale shown uh, as the horizontal axis. So for each bed then, the width that's plotted on that horizontal axis tells us the grain size. We can see, for example, that the bed near the bottom there, the conglomerate bed, shown with the, uh, the circle symbol, labelled at polymict, is actually, at its base, pebble size. Near the top of the bed, we can see it goes down to a very coarse sand. So we're seeing a change in the grain size, we're seeing what the grain size is. We can also see, with the symbols that are shown within each of these layers, what sedimentary structures might be present. Different sedimentary structures will, can, will be represented by different symbols. The final part of this graphic log gives us an opportunity to represent any other information that we might find. 
you'll see some descriptive terms here. You'll see um, some symbols representing um, fossils that are found. Some information about colour and maybe even the direction that the current was flowing in that deposited each of these layers. So you can see there's a tremendous amount of information on these graphic logs about the sequence of sediments. And it's a very, very efficient way of presenting this information. With all of this, we could even then start to come up with an interpretation of what's happening to deposit these sediments, how the environment and the energy may have changed over geological time. Okay, having seen all that, if you look on your notes, you'll see there's the start of a really quite a simple sedimentary log. What I'd like you to do is have a go at completing this sedimentary log using the descriptions in ta table two. These are the descriptions. Pause the video now and have a go at completing the graphic log. I'll show you the photographs in a couple of moments. Okay, there are two additional photographs which add to the information about the sequence of sediments. This is photograph two, a picture of a type of fossil we call a graptolite. Can you find a symbol to represent that for the appropriate bed? And this is photograph three. You can see some sedimentary structures here that formed on the bottom of bed two. Think about how you could represent these on your graphic log. The last log I'd like to look at is this one. This is one that's already been completed. You can see we've got a fairly simple grain size and a whole sequence of sediments with the sedimentary structures that are shown. Now these sediments have been interpreted as being deposited in a fluvial environment. What I'd like you to do is to think about how the evidence shown on this graphic log indicates deposition in that environment. There are four things I'd like you to look at. How do each of those ideas, how do each of those pieces of evidence, should I say, tell us that this was laid down in a river? Pause the video now and have a go at completing that. Okay, we can see we've got four different features here. The asymmetrical ripple marks are an indication of a unidirectional flow. That could be the wind, could be the river, but something flowing in one direction. Crossbedding again forms in a unidirectional flow. And it's formed when there's deposition on a an inclined surface of things like ripples or dunes even. Again, this could be formed in a river or in the wind. Grady bedding can only really be formed in a river or in a flow of water to be more accurate. And this is formed when the energy level of a river decreases. So you have coarser grain fragments deposited first and then as the river slows finer grain class get deposited above. Finally an erosional base is where we have that high energy level 
uh, of a fast flowing river, say, um, eroding the top surface uh, of all the sediments before it starts to deposit coarser clasts. So, to conclude, graphic logs give us a huge amount of information about a sequence of sediments. It's the most effective way for geologists to communicate the full detail of a sediment sequence to other geologists. It's really important that we get to grips with not only what they tell us, but also how we can plot them for ourselves. Remember to come up with your interesting question and bring it along to class. I'll see you then.